This is the patch and release video for version 4.4 .4 of Poyomi Toon Shader. If you want it right now, it's available to all $5 plus patrons, and there's a link in the description below. If you don't want to pay for Patreon, it'll be available in two weeks for free for everyone else. Something you may have already noticed is that the UI is different. Rather than having a huge stack of categories now, we just have these six, and the reason it's like that, I know people may not be happy with it, but the reason it's like that is that we have a ton of people who come in, they use the shader, they see like 20 categories, and they have no idea what they do. So they're all still there, nothing will break in your shader, but they've been moved around in a way that makes sense logically. So your main category is just going to cover your main stuff the same as it did before. Uh, the panning nodes have been moved into the textures. So if you click a texture now, you'll just see the panning for that texture. It's not on all textures. If there's more textures that you want to have panning, let me know. There's a link to the Discord in the description below. So the main tab just covers main textures, normal maps, alpha stuff, details, the same stuff it did before. And then the lighting covers everything involved in lighting. So you have your, your generic lighting, light and shadows. You have subsurface scattering, which is kind of how light interacts under the surface. So like if light shines through your ears or whatever. And then we have rim lighting and baked lighting. So before somebody may have jumped in and seen subsurface scattering and had no idea what it was. And they still won't. There's a tutorial here if they want to learn, but at least they know it's a lighting setting. And reflections are just metallics, your clear coat, matte caps. Like, people may not have even known clear coat was a thing in the shader, just because it was hidden under metallics. So, if you don't use metallics, you don't know clear coat is there. With this, I can kind of separate it a little more and not take up a ton of room. And it's the same with a lot of stuff. So, special effects covers your mission, flipbook, dissolve, panosphere, mirror. So, whether you render in mirrors or not, distance fading and angular fading. And these things have been here forever, but I'm guessing most people didn't even know they existed because they were kind of under menus they didn't use. So, now you just see them. And parallax is still here. There's some changes to that this week. I'll cover it later. And rendering options covers your basic rendering options, but also stencil and debug views now. So that covers the UI changes. I think Thry added, let go to the settings. He added a new way to see the textures. So we've always had small and big. If you have panning, it uses this new one, which is the stylized layout. So if you want to see your texture over here and all this stuff and have your panning down here and it's always big, the stylized is, it's nice, it works. You can use big and you can use small. I prefer small so that's what we're going to stick with for this video. The shader now supports vertex colors. So you could say select this vertex and color it red. You can do this in Blender or any 3D modeling program. You can also do it in Unity if you have the right tools downloaded. I do not. But let me show you what that looks like. I just colored these in Blender and it's pretty easy. So you, this one, this vertice is just blue and then, or this vertex is just blue and this one is red. This one, these two are green. It kind of blends between them in the triangle. And this one is just a big strip of red vertices. This is cool if you just have like a model that's solid colors and you can just vertex it and, or vertex color it. Vertex colors are super cheap, super easy to render. So it's nice for that. And also if you download a model that's from a game or from anything that has vertex colors built into it, you can visualize them now and see them so that you can kind of get an idea of what they're doing. There's a new option for additive lights. As you can see here, it's just a point light. A lot of people really hate this because they'll join on frankly terrible worlds that have like 16 point lights and then you, all of a sudden you have all of these like different shadows and they're overlapping like you see here. There's no way to fix that currently in this version of Unity. When we move to the high definition render pipeline we have access to more lights at once and we can kind of blend between them. 
but for now it's going to have these hard shadows. And there's always been tools to deal with this, so if I open up the material and I go into lighting, light and shadow, there is advanced, and this covers all of the additive lighting. So if I went to additive softness, for example, I could soften that lighting. Or if I went to offset, I can move the offset of that lighting. But now I added the intensity. So you can actually, if you just hate the way these lights look and you really don't want them, you can just drop that intensity to zero. This will make you look weird in situations where things should be lit, but it's going to also stop you from looking disgusting. So it's just, it's just there as an extra feature. I would recommend leaving it on just so lighting can actually affect you and you can be affected by uh, flashlights or lights in the scene. Horror maps especially look good with this. Uh, just So it's there if you want to use it. I would recommend against it, but if you absolutely cannot stand how point lights and spotlights look on your avatar, feel free to use this. One thing I've been meaning to do for a while is give people the ability to make unlit outlines. So as you can see here, these outlines are actually white, and this side is black, this side is orange, it's being lit by this orange sun. Clearly not what you want. So if you go to enable lighting in your outline settings and just disable it, you'll get unlit outlines. So it's just pure white, it's whatever color you select. And it just works. This has been a bug for a little bit that I wasn't totally sure how to deal with and there was other things that were higher priority because, to be honest, very few people use this. But it's fixed now, so if we enable parallax effects and then parallax height. We're just going to cover height for this one. You can do it internal as well, but it's a little more complicated. So I'm going to add a noise map. This one is fine. I'm also going to color the texture the same color as the noise so it's more obvious. So put this in here. I'm going to increase the tiling by so it's 10 by 10. I'll do the same down here. And as you can see, you can now use parallax height maps and they work properly. So it looks like the ground has these little bumps. Same with this sphere. So there was an issue before where it was. Just It just wasn't doing it correctly, and now it just works. So, nice. You can adjust the height, do whatever you want. Obviously, if you go too far, it's going to get kind of crazy, but if you stay within proper limits, you can have a nice-looking effect. You see the little layers, but this would... I would consider this not within safe limits. <laughs> Looks good on the sphere though. I got a request this week from a user who had just updated from an old version. The problem was that the old version ignored fog entirely and they were sort of taking advantage of that. And the new version has more features so they wanted to update, but it uses fog and they couldn't do the same stuff in their world that they were doing. So I added a ignore fog function down here so if you go to render options and just click ignore fog you will entirely ignore the fog so this object has a different material if I just go into the rendering options ignore fog you'll see that it renders properly maybe you have a use for this maybe you don't it's a neat little thing but this is a good example of if you have any trouble with the shader like anything at all the smallest little thing you can pop into the Discord, you can let me know, and we can determine whether it needs to be changed or I can fix it, or maybe I build like a special little build for you that works a little different. That's pretty rare, I wouldn't expect that, but it happens sometimes. So if you have any issues with the shader, just tell me, join the Discord, let me know, no matter how small, because chances are it's a bug that affects other people and I just haven't seen it. So always let me know. I added a matte cap to this model. It is just a simple one to show hair reflections. And this is what a lot of people do, but then they'll go and add a normal map to their model and it kind of really messes up their matte cap. And that's not what they want. So they want to have that extra sort of shadow fidelity where you get just nicer looking shadows from all your normal maps. 
but they also want the Mac app to function the way they expect it to. So now you have the option to basically ignore normal maps on the Mac app. You can switch between the vertex normal and the pixel normal. So the vertex is just the normals that the model has. There's no, there's no pixel shading. There's no normal maps. There's no any of that stuff. So if you switch into pixel, it's going to use the normal maps. And if you switch to vertex, it's going to not. And I actually added the ability to do this for anything. So if you want something else to not use normals or the normal maps that you apply, or you want the option to switch between using them and not using them, let me know. I can add that feature in. All right, I made the floor shiny, as you can see in the metallics under reflections. Metallics, I just turned it on and turned up the settings. This was an issue I was getting from a lot of people. They were trying to use the world, or they were trying to use the shader for the world. And the reflections weren't right. So there's a reflection probe here, and you can see that it sees that this cylinder is here, but it's not right at all. And same with the cube. And the way to fix that is to use box projection, like you'd see right here, and it'll give you far more accurate reflections for the situation. They're still not right, but this is generally what you'd see in a world to make things look a little bit better. Obviously you don't want to use this for the floor because it doesn't look that good, but it's a lot better than this. So now you can enable box projection and it'll actually work with the shader. I got a request this week to add lighting to clear coats because we had a user who was going into a dark room and they were completely bright. The issue with that is that they wanted to be shiny, but the sky was sort of reflecting on their surface because the world had no, um, the world had no proper reflection probes. So in this case, I have no reflection probe. So the sphere will only reflect the sky. And the issue with that is if you go into a dark room and there's no reflection probe set up for that room, you're still going to reflect a bright sky, whether you're in a pitch black room or not. So if you are having issue with this in a world you commonly visit, you can just go into your clear coat settings and you can enable force lighting. So this will force your clear coat to be affected by lighting, which doesn't really make sense reflection wise. Like, if you shine a light at your mirror, it kind of just reflects and goes on the wall. You're not lighting the mirror itself, you're just lighting what the mirror sees. So in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do this, but if you're having trouble because you go to a world that doesn't have properly set up reflection probes, this may be a good choice. Try it if you're having problems. If you're not having problems, just leave it unchecked. All right, I believe that covers everything this week. So if you have any trouble with anything you saw here or trouble with the shader in general, feel free to join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. Again, if you want this right now, it's available to all $5 plus patrons. Feel free to go to Patreon and take a look. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.